Okay, so in the previous class we were talking about the exciting topic of root locus and how to plot it by hand in the 21st century. Okay, and as we mentioned, this was devised in 1948. Uh, the idea is, I want to plot the roots of 1 plus k g s, which is the same as, so my g of s is n of s over d of s. So I want to plot the roots of 1 plus k g s, which is the same as d of s plus k n of s as k goes from 0 to infinity. Okay, So that this way we will we'll be able to figure out the closed loop behavior uh, for specific values of k or in general for most values of k uh, without any trouble. Okay, And there were six ingredients that we needed to make sure is satisfied. Oh, so what, what, do, what does this imply? It implies that absolute value of k g s is equal to 1. Angle of k g s is equal to 180 degrees plus minus k multiplied by 360 degree. Uh, so this k is the gain, this k is just a small natural number. So how do I differentiate between them? What did I use last in the previous? P? OK. Oh, but P is already used as poles. D? Oh, B? OK, B for boy. OK, that's B. B equals 1 to whatever, some number. OK. <coughs> B is not used. All right, so I need to plot all the points S that satisfies these two conditions. This is not important because uh, this value only tells us what the value of K should be. So this will give us K equals 1 over absolute value of GS. K is usually positive in most uh, control applications. OK? This is the one that's most important. And this is the one that gives. Uh, as the shape of the root locus without actually giving us information about what the magnitude at individual points is. That you use this expression to find out. OK, so what were the six important things? So the first thing was uh, root locus on real line, and this is something that we discussed towards the end of the previous class. The second thing was centroid of the asymptotes. Sigma A. Third was angle of the asymptote phi a. Fourth is uh, intersection of root locus with imaginary axis. Fifth is breakaway point. Sixth is angle of departure. At poles. And the seventh is angle of arrival. At zeros. or infinity.
Okay, so let's uh, look at the handouts once more. Um, for every possible root locus, so let's look at root locus number three, which looks something like this. The root locus is given by this curve. <coughs> okay, so it's given by this curve. Okay, so this is what the root locus looks like for root locus number three on the handout. And this is my sigma A, this angle is my phi A, and there are three such asymptotes because it's a third order system with no zeros. So all the zeros of, uh, of the closed loop system, all the poles of the closed loop systems would be at infinity as we had discussed in the previous class because infinity is a zero to the original open loop system. So as you let k go to infinity, all the zeros will be at infinity. All the roots of the closed loop system, all the poles of the closed loop system will be at infinity. So the first thing is root locus on the real line. So we had discussed it in the previous class that if you look at uh, the real axis, um, you can figure out using the angle property. So angle of kgs equals to 180 degree using this property, you can draw the root locus on the real line, and I'm going to tell you what the uh, rule of thumb for real line is in some time. Then this is the breakaway, this, then the second is centroid of the asymptote sigma A, so we'll give you a, a formula for computing sigma A. We'll, similarly, we'll have a formula for computing phi A, okay? Then the fourth is intersection of root locus with imaginary axis, so that's this point. Uh, you can use root array to identify these points. Then the fifth is breakaway point, so that's this point. Okay, and uh, we'll study a formula for computing the breakaway point. And then angle of departure at poles and angle of arrival at zero. So there are no zeros here, and the poles are all on the real axis. So the angle of departure and have certain specific properties. Um, but uh, let's look at some other non-trivial. Ah, so look at uh, root locus number 13, and there you have a triple pole at the origin, and you will see the angle of departure at that particular point to be something that is non-trivial. It's not zero or 180 degree, it is something else. Okay. <clears throat> so the goal for today's class is to study uh, how to compute um, how to go through these seven steps to draw the root locus approximately. So the first of all, root locus on real line, this will be the lies on real axis to the left of 
odd number of poles and zeros. Okay, this was the observation. I had not mentioned it in the previous class, but this was our observation in the in the last class. Okay, so let's look at this real line. So I'm going all the way from plus infinity towards minus infinity. Uh, I encounter the first pole. I draw the root locus until I encounter the first, the second pole or a zero. Okay, so in this case, I encounter a pole. So I draw the root locus from the first pole to the second pole, and then I stop. Then I reach the third pole and then I start drawing the root locus to the left of the third pole. Okay. On the other hand, if I had a zero, I would draw the root locus on real axis. So, so I go from plus infinity towards minus infinity. I encounter the first pole. I draw all the way until the second pole that I meet. And then there is nothing in between. So the root locus will be between this, these two poles. And then I encounter a zero. And then I have to draw the root locus all the way to the third pole. Okay. <coughs> so there are a total of two poles plus one zero, so odd numbers of poles and zeros. And then I draw the on towards the left of that particular zero. I draw the root locus all the way until I encounter the even number of poles and zeros. And then I continue this way. Okay. So if you do that, if you pick any point here, let's pick this point R. This is minus P1, minus P2, minus Z1, and minus P3. And let's see if R satisfies the angle constraint right here. So let's do that. So I need to know angle of R plus P1, angle of R plus P2, R plus P3, and angle of R plus Z1. So this is R. This is minus P1. So the angle of R plus P1 is this angle. And what is that equal to? What is angle of R plus P1? Can you all see it from that side? 180. So this is my point R on the root locus. This is my point minus P1, which is one of the poles of the original open loop system. And the angle between R plus P1, so basically if you have any two complex numbers, R1 and R2, then the angle of R1 minus R2 is you draw this uh, line segment from R1 to R2 in the direction of R2 to R1. Look at the horizontal, look at this angle. That's the angle that I'm using here. Okay, it's the same angle. Okay, so, okay, so is this stuff clear? This is from complex numbers. All right, so R plus P1 is 180 degrees. What about R plus P2? 180. What about R plus P3? Zero. Zero. Now someone else should answer it. What is R plus Z1? 180. Okay, so what's angle of K plus angle of KGS? Angle of 
angle of r plus or not angle of r plus z1 minus angle of r plus p1 minus angle of r plus p2 minus angle of r plus p3 and that's equal to minus 180 degrees. <clears throat> and that meets this criteria. Okay, so that part is clear. Any questions on that? Yes. So is the root locus solely dependent on the configuration of zeros and poles? That's right. Okay. Yes. In fact, all of the stuff that I've written here, it depends predominantly on where the poles and zeros are. So um, remember I had mentioned in the previous class, so when you have, you draw the open loop poles and zeros on the uh, complex plane, and then the root locus, as you move, go from k equals to zero to k equals infinity, you are going to go from poles to zeros. So open loop poles to open loop zeros, including infinity. Okay, so at k equals to infinity, all the open loop zeros would become closed loop poles, okay? That's the property of root locus. And we had, uh, we had discussed that in the previous class, so look at the lecture if you don't recall that discussion. Okay, centroid. So centroid sigma A is sum of poles minus sum of zeros <coughs> over N minus M. N is the degree of denominator D of S and M is the degree of numerator N of S. So this is summation of minus PI So that's the position of the sigma A that you see where all the asymptotes meet. And the derivation of sigma A follows from looking at a point on the root locus at infinity, so something that is far, far away from the origin, and then seeing, uh, trying to figure out at what point are these three asymptotes going to meet. Okay, so um, you, can, you can figure out the derivation in the book. It's not very hard to follow, but it's very, uh, the, de the derivation in the book is not very clear about it. So I'm trying to find out a better source for derivation of the asymptotic, uh, the points at which all the asymptotes meet. Okay, so that's sigma A. You can find out by a simple formula, phi A, is 180 degrees 2b plus 1 over n minus m. b goes from 0, 1, 2, all the way to n minus m minus 1. That gives me the angle of the asymptote. Represent here? So this is the B. Okay. 
that's the same B that I have there. Okay. And then the <coughs> N and N and M. These are the degree of denominator, degree of numerator. Okay. <coughs> okay, so let's come back to this example. I have three poles, so N